Right, and here they come. Welcome everyone. Welcome to yet another live XMD Academy webinar. So excited to have you all here. Thank you for coming. We have an action packed and information filled webinar for you. And I have Spicer here with me. If you can, uh, keep your webcams off and your microphones off. Uh, we're going to have a portfolio critique session as well as a lot of awesome information from Spicer here. Um, so now uh, we'll get down to it. A uh, man that needs no introduction, Spicer McLeroy. Welcome, everyone, to this webinar. I've got to say right now we have the highest attendance and sign-up record of all time at xmd.com, xmdacademy.com. And I want to thank every single one of you for being here. So today, if you don't know, I teach collectibles course, and it focuses a lot on anatomy um, and getting your foundations down. And so this whole webinar is kind of like to simulate a live uh, session. So it's a 10-week course. There's uh, at least like 10 to 11 sessions in there. And uh, this is kind of what we're going to go through whenever you submit work uh, every week. So uh, let's get started. But before we do, let us bow to the masters of CG and art, starting with Frank Frazetta, St. Joseph of Drust, St. Paul of Gabori, St. Ryan King of Slian and the Archangel, Archangel Raphael. Raphael, 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 Raphael. Thank you for your continued education, inspiration, and overall badassness. Let's get into it right now. All righty. So this uh, is uh, ya Yaakov. I'm going to go with that. Okay. So um, one thing. Um, Preferably, I would, I would rather have ZTLs to sculpt over um, to do that type of thing. So on these, we're just going to go through them real quick. We're going to spend more time on the ZTLs, and we're just going to have, like, general comments and stuff like that on the uh, portfolio reviews. So um, if you can hear me, can you put something in the chat so I know I'm not just talking for no reason? Put in the chat, 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 if you can hear me. If I'm too quiet, if I'm too loud. Everything good, Brian, Doug? All righty. So uh, let us get started. Okay, so Yakov, um, 2D, 3D artist. Let's see. So you want to get into miniatures because I see a lot of things titled miniature. So uh, if you're in the chat, let me know. Mike, if you can keep an eye on the chat, let me know if he's in there. Um, okay, so the, the issue is that you're a 2D, 3D artist and you have a lot of miniature work. So I would kind of decide where you want to go. Like if you want to do miniatures or you want to do concept art because you have a whole lot less concept art and you got Batman Blade Runners <laughs> automatically. You get a follow and you get a like right there, but <laughs> come on, let's be serious. <laughs> All right, um, so you definitely have 2D skills, you definitely have 3D skills, um, but if you're looking for a job, then you need to decide which one you want to do. Because right now, if someone were to come to your uh, portfolio, they'd be like, well, am I hiring him for 2D? Am I hiring him for 3D? Am I hiring him for miniatures? Am I hiring him for, you know, like what, what are we going for? So um, that would be the first thing I would do. I would have, like, uh, if we look at mine, um, and we'll go back to yours in just a second freelance character artist, and all I have is character art, right? So when someone comes here to my website, they're going, or my art station, they're going to know exactly what I am and exactly what they can hire me for. So that would be my first suggestion. Um, let's see. Yeah, you have good, that's good. Let's see, because I can give a whole lot more value on ZTLs than I can just general comments on these, but um, your hey. details... Yes. He said he sent a ZTO link as well, hmm. but I, I don't see it in the list. Yeah, I don't. I didn't see it either. But your fur doesn't really look like fur here on the arm. 
uh, what I would have done is instead of uh, trying to sculpt it into the arm, I would have sculpted the arm to maintain the form and then I would have created separate geometry and maybe even an insert brush so it would make my life a whole lot easier uh, in terms of the fur. Uh, the armor looks okay. It looks a little wavy in some parts, um, but the bare face looks really good. And the whole overall feel and lunging is a really good angle and all of that. So take a look at the, your, one of your humans. Um, your shoulder and bicep are not anatomically correct. Um, the way it's, uh, your bicep should go into your coracoid process, and then your chest and your shoulder should go over your bicep. This one seems like the bicep is going into the shoulder and they're just stopping. I uh, don't really see a lot of like flexion in the in the hand. Uh, this one I do, but this one I really don't, um, partly because there's no, like whenever you flex your hand, you have these, um, um, what is it? Um, extensor, what is it? Whenever you, uh, yeah, flexors. So whenever you're flexing your hand, you're gonna have these right here. And I don't see that on here. So it seems like a very relaxed hand. And doing this, like, you need a, a whole lot more action in this pose. Um, either, like, this, where his shoulder, you can see my shoulder is at an oblique angle. Something like that, because everything's horizontal. And then you just have one line that's deviating from that, which is the club. So it seems kind of out of place. And uh, you have a lot of wobbliness going on here. So, um but you're definitely on your way. I mean, you're really good at uh, capturing the essence of an animal. But like uh, around here, and especially around the eye, you definitely need some skull knowledge on uh, this because there's not a lot of room for the jaw and all that. Uh, goblin looks good. The uh, material or the uh, props look good. I like your material, but again, on this hair, I wouldn't sculpt it into the character. I would have it as a separate piece uh, because it's it's just starting to look like. Um, like vegetables as opposed to um, fur. So that's what I would, I would do for yours. Okay. Um, Hamed CG artist. Uh, yeah, you need a lot of anatomy on, on yours. I see you're, you know, you're trying to different pose and everything, but the, it's really, really lumpy. Really lumpy. You have really good um, uh, tibia here. You have a good um, um, knee. Um, leg looks okay, but it's just just very uh, wobbly, and your clavicle here is going into your shoulder, and it should go up. Uh, your face is okay, uh, but you're just missing a lot of information. Like this little dip right here is aging her about 10 years, right? Because that's what happens whenever, you know, we have jowling right here. So whenever we get older, this starts loosening. And so she looks like a, an older mother. Something like that. Let me give you a follow. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's go with this face. Yeah, this face, I know you're going stylized and everything, but you're just missing a lot of information. Like this face is swooping in when there should be a, a mandible length of jaw, angle of jaw, and all that good stuff. You don't have enough space here, so everything's just going up into the nose when the nose should be its own separate thing. Um, your drawing is pretty good. Um, your accessories is pretty good. Um, okay, well, there's music on that, so I'm not going to play because we might get taken down. Um, but yeah, the, I mean, you just really need to understand what you're sculpting because I think you're sculpting from imagination or, um, and you don't have the foundation of anatomy pushing this forward, right? So uh, I would definitely do that. Um, Annabelle, let's take a look at yours. This one, uh, let's take a look at this one earlier. It's looking really good. Uh, your issue with all your sculpts is your nose. You don't know what's going on with the nose. Your alar cartilage and your septal and lateral cartilages are very inconsistent. And you just usually sculpt a button for the nose, but you have so much realism everywhere else. And then we look at the nose and it's just, you know, you need alar cartilage in here. Uh, your infraorbital furrow is pretty good. Your canthal tendons here need a little bit more work, a little bit more definition. 
um, not in terms of being aggressive with it, but um, but being a little bit more deliberate with their shapes because it's a little wobbly here. I think you might be using uh, the guy from Peaky Blinders as inspiration. I forgot his name, but yeah, you can see like all this realism, and then we get to the nose, and it's just uh, it's like from imagination. And so you really need to understand your your nose there. Um, and also your zygomatic arch is going up over your ear when it should be going to your ear. Uh, your temporal arch is okay. Uh, what you're missing is a frontal bone and having it dive down into the temporal arch. Because right now you just have a very round forehead going back and forth. And uh, for those that are watching, we can go way more detail on the ZTLs uh, than we are on these images. So if you submit a ZTL, definitely stick around. We're going to get a good review. Yeah, I mean, everything else is on point. Everything else is on point. You just need facial anatomy knowledge. And you need, you need a refresher on that. And so in my course, I mean, we dive deep into anatomy, facial, body, female, male, both of that stuff. So uh, photogrammetry, I'm not really, um, I'm not really a specialist in this. Um, I mean, the skull looks good. I mean, I'm not sure about how to critique this um, specifically because uh, none of this is sculpted because you're a photogrammetry artist. Uh, if you just want regular, um, you know, um, comments, I would just say that a lot of this seems flat in terms of its rendering. This is a really good render. I think you get this from Pierre Rogers, right? Uh, that um, that tutorial. Uh, this is nice and moody. This image right here, but your teeth are kind of weird. So, um, yeah, I would just look at, at that and then kind of, whenever you're doing a creature, you always want to find the skull of something similar to it and understand why that is. In my course, we teach you all about facial anatomy and you can apply that to a horse, to a tiger, to a crocodile, to a hippo, to anything, right? So, um, yeah, if you're into leveling up, then you definitely want this course. Um, okay, so we're going to move on. Uh, Carlos de Carlos Romania. Okay, let's take a look. It's nice and cute. I like it. This is a little weird. That right there. It looks good from the side, but he also feels like he's falling back. So I would bend him at the knees and have him go forward, or uh, because right now his head's like falling back. Um, let's see. Shot. Uh, okay. Mm -mm -mm. Let's take a look and straight line. I guess you're just doing it for the pose or doing it for the concept. But uh, straight, 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 straight for everything is not going to really help. Uh, I love this foot, though. I love these planes of the foot. This little jaunt right here is a little, <coughs> is a little weird, but doesn't mean I don't like it. Um, and the fingers, I think they could be a whole lot larger. And you can see how it's very vertical. I'm going to add some type of curve or something like up here. It reminds me of like um, those seagulls, you know, with the long beak, and then they got the big um, uh, pelican. Eagle. Pelican, yeah, the pelican. It reminds me of that. So I would use that as a bit of inspiration, like the cartoon, like Looney Tunes, like version of it, and take a look at that. Um, because um, although you do have curves and all that, it could definitely be a whole lot sexier. Um, let me give you a follow. Yay. And you just need more work, brother. This, this is good. I like your cartoony stuff. Um, but you need a whole lot more work on your site. right? Uh, there's just some things here. Like, um, again, I'm on like um, anatomy based. So a little bit more of a shoulder, maybe a little bit wider. And then you can make this wider too, or make the head smaller because this coming in and out like that just seems very, very wavy. And I feel like you need a definitive edge here somewhere. Um, and you really like small hands. So I would increase your hands. Um, that way they can articulate, they can move, they can do all that stuff. They can express is what I would do for yours. Hey, Katrina Chan has a question. So regarding portfolios, how do you show I can also do this art when applying 
for not your real ideal job because not everyone can land their dream job. So how do you show like, uh, I can also do this. Hmm. The biggest thing you need to do is that you need to go out to these conventions and you need to shake hands with people and you need to put your art in their face. And that's what you need to do. Sitting at home, not networking, not doing anything like that is going to be very, very difficult. I'm speaking from experience. So um, if you are going out there and you're still not getting any feedback, then most likely, or getting any callbacks, then most likely you just need to spend a little bit more time and getting better. Um, even though, like, say you want to be a character artist, but there's a job for retopology and textures, uh, you can do that, and that's fine. Any, if you're an artist, any art job is better than any corporate job right? At least you're in the field. At least you're talking with people that understand you and have similar goals as you. Is it ideal? No. Is it a way to get in? Yes. Um, but you can't, I mean, you just need to continue focusing on what your dream is. So if your dream is to be a character artist, but you have a job to re apologize things, then, you know, take that job. But whenever you get home, Make sure you're still studying. Make sure you still have a lot of mentors in your uh, foundational um, career. Um, and, and just learn from as many people as possible, as much as possible. You can't, you can't do it all on your own. It's, it's, um, it's not good for you. It just takes you longer. All righty. So uh, hopefully that answered your question. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, Jonathan, let's take a look. Okay, this is nice and cute. Uh, the pose is good. It's uh, cut and keyed pretty well. Um, nice print. These are nice and cute. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, of course, we've got to go. <laughs> oh, we got to be Batman. So this is a character I made for Thai CED, uh, made to be 3D printed. Nice. Well, good job. You're already on your way. I see the arms look a little short. That was that would be the only thing on this one. Uh, let's take the Samus. I'm not sure what this character is uh, in terms of their history. So I'm just gonna talk about it um, anatomically. Uh, this calf is a little bit this this round, and then it just comes out again. You need your Achilles heel in here somewhere. Uh, your, you need another bump right here for basically your funny bone, uh, but it's called your medial epicondyle right here. Your uh, pectoralis needs to go over your bicep, right? It needs to go over your bicep. This shoulder needs to end halfway down the arm. Um, the pose is good. Um, the knees are good. A lot of people get those wrong and give me noodle knees, so that's really good. Um, let's take a look at another angle. Yeah, I mean, the finish is good. Paint's good. Hands okay. Would definitely like a little bit more planer on that. Just a little bit more uh, structure to it. But yeah, good job on that. Um, yeah, you just need a little bit more refinement on your anatomy. Just a little bit more. Because you're getting a lot of the uh, things that people get wrong. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this leg, the front of it's not really working for me. Uh, I would end it right around here. It just pushes back a little bit. Mm -hmm. And the pose. Yeah, I, I get you're you're going for you know sexy, sexy pose, but it's just not really working for me because it looks like she's about to fall over a little bit but other than that yeah this is a good one too good job I a little bit of a clarification on katrina's mm -hmm. question uh steve said i think she means with portfolio how you said first review take off second uh, 2d stuff and show your report is only character how in your report do you show you do multiple things you need to title your portfolio generalist or something like that. Uh, I mean, 
if you want to be a generalist and show everything, you know, but you got to show the best stuff that you have, not just a lot of stuff. Quantity is not as be better, but you know, you, you heard it over and over again. Quality is better than quantity, right? So if you have five really, really polished pieces and they are of a bunch of different things and you can, you, you can definitely do that. There's plenty of generalist uh, jobs out there where you'll be doing rigging, you know, environment modeling, texturing, all different types of stuff. And there's plenty of studios that need that type of knowledge as well. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, if that's what you want to focus on, then do that. If you have talent in other areas, but you have a dream job of a character artist, then take those talents and put them into the character artist position or your artwork or your goal. And that way it just looks even better. Because if you can do environment art, but you want to be a character artist, then make badass, you know, environments with badass characters. And it's only going to make you more money. One thing I have seen some people do in the past is to have two separate portfolios for two different uh, job types. Mm, yeah, you can do that too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but this one, uh, this one's really good. Um, you obviously have a good co uh, grasp of 3D printing and what it's going to take for it to print su successfully. Um, again, just a little anatomy, just a little anatomy here and there, and it would uh, definitely send you over the top, brother. So good job on that. Uh, John Solmos, um, this is good. This honor too is, uh, good. Um, but your zygomatics going up over your ear. Um, and I understand this is highly stylized and all that stuff. Um, but if we can bring in a little bit more structure, that'd be good. Um, your, uh, your jowling right here that you're trying to get should be coming from here and then around and then here. Again, I know it's a super stylized and they put lines all over the place, but you still got to have that foundational knowledge so that you can break these rules or pull them out. Uh, your orbit is getting lost. Uh, it's being, it's a triangle. It should have a little bit more rounder uh, feel to it. Your infraorbital furrow is not being shown that much. Your lips are really good. Your chin's good. The skin texture is good. Hair could be a little bit better, especially here. I would just color that section in a little bit darker. Um, but I would definitely do that. And I know Dishonor 2 breaks a lot of rules. Um, so generally, I don't enjoy looking at it. But um, but yeah, that, that's what I would do with that. Uh, this one's really good. I like this. I like the proportions and all that. Um, the hand looks really good. Face looks really good. Uh, texturing, all that stuff, really, really good. I like this one. The only thing this needs is a pose because, um, you know, this is really boring, boring pose. There's even like a, like a thumbs up or something, something to ex to exert his personality. Um, Drift, Dark Elf, Rangia. Yeah, just a lot of facial anatomy that you need to really bring this together. All right, good job, John. Uh, Yulia, uh, let's take a look at yours. Okay, so. This one's really good. I was taking a look at this one earlier. This is a lot of y'all are doing stylized stuff, and um, that's great. But you got to know how to do realism. You got to know how to do it. You have to do it well. Because if you can do that well, whenever you come to something like this, it doesn't take you any time at all. It would take you a day to do something like this if you knew anatomy back and forth. But you're capturing all the character. You're capturing, I mean, everything has a really great mood. Everything has a, a nice character, nice style. I mean, this one's so funny. I love that one. No, yeah. I mean, you definitely have a personality and uh, all that stuff. So I would definitely keep doing that. The only thing I would say, um, like on this lighting, you did really well. On the other ones, like this one, this big old pink light coming over from here really distracts a lot because you have pink hair and then you got a pink light. So, you know, something contrasting uh, or complementary would bring in a whole lot more contrast. So I would have brought the blue this way and had the pink rim that way. Um, yeah, and again, you, you know, you just have a lot of cute characters, which is good, which is really good. But whenever you want to do realism, you're going to have a hard time, right? Because all this is going in the wrong direction. This right here, um, you don't have enough space for your eye in terms of the orbit. Um, your malar is ending here, your nose is up here, um, your clavicles are going down towards the center. So again, it's very important that you um, 
that you know what's going on with all this because your your cute stuff looks cute and you're obviously accomplished at it but when you try to do something like this which is generally what you'll be paid to do um, it's going to look a little boring because you don't have the really nice curves and block outs <clears throat> of these muscles like this tibia should be a little bit curved and all that stuff but um but yeah you're on your way you're on your way uh noel 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 okay adam hughes nice too straight of a leg the knees um not very uh it's not deliberate enough uh, your calf is a bit too long uh this face isn't really working for me you don't have it in for an orbital furrow or any of your um your orbit uh, your nose is pretty good your nasal labial folds kind of mess with me whenever you smile your um inferior tarsal plate's going to go up a little bit because you're just pushing it up whenever you smile your cheek so it looks like her eyes are wide open but she's smiling so you have conflicting uh expressions um wonder woman pretty good i hate red wax so i just want to say that uh your shoe's a little short uh your vastus lateralis or medialis is over on the top when it should be on the side um your um sartorius uh, attaching to your tibia the head of your tibia is kind of off as you just got a bump here um the arm is okay uh, but this should be going into your olecranon and then uh, this should be going in between your bicep and your brachialis. Uh, yeah, this this um, tricep tendon needs a whole lot of work, and especially this tricep and uh, your medial epicondyle and how this goes from your ulna to your uh, styloid process. So you need, I mean, in the render, it looks good, right? You're getting everything. And if that's your intention is to be an illustrator, then you should be okay. But if you're... Um, intention is to be a paid sculptor we need to do a little bit better feels like she's about to fall over um, so I would have moved the foot or the knee out somehow just so that she's balanced she seems really short too I would double check the head height because it looks like one, two. So it looks like seven and a half maybe eight but um, I would, even though you may have gone in here and ensure that it was eight heads, but you still as an artist have to go in and extend things, make it look sexy, right? So these arms seem really short. This torso seems really short compared to this big head, right? So either I would shrink the head down so that this seems all longer, right? Um, but in terms, again, if illustrations your intention then then you should be fine just keep going uh, let's take a look at this <laughs> that's funny yeah good pose yeah right here this is where it gets boring like in the front like you have your work is good really really good from one one angle but then when you start turning it around you start seeing a lot of boring things uh, that uh, always whenever you're doing jeans or something just get in a pose and have someone take a picture of you it's way easier. You're doing a whole lot less guesswork. This is really good. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have good posing. It's, it's, it's pretty good. It just needs to be refined. And your feet uh, seem like the part that you hate sculpting the most. Because <laughs> uh, they're just going in like that over and over again. They should be going out a little bit more. Uh, but you have a lot of character, and I would stop rendering in red wax. I would immediately stop doing that because you're taking out all of the information uh, because of the red. So stop doing red. Stop, stop, stop. Um, and whenever you're doing this, where you're just uh, doing screen grabs, shift S, have the eyes as the active one, and then have everything else uh, regular. Um, and so that way your eyes come out of your head and it doesn't look like it's all fading. Um, I had a quick question. Yes. Um, Doug asked, what are your thoughts on ArtStation portfolio versus portfolio website? Don't do portfolio website. There's no reason for you to spend the money, spend the time designing and getting that all done. 
just so people can go to your site when arts when art stations already got it figured out for you yeah, and you can have a domain name too you got yeah, it all set up yeah if you get art station pro it's gonna be way cheaper than designing and making your own website uh, especially in if you're doing it yourself or hiring someone else to do it art stations already got taken care of like if you're building your site or doing any of that you're literally wasting your time because arts everyone goes to art station this is the most discoverable place that you can be in terms of being a being an artist so it's either this or instagram so um yeah um well on this one i really like it uh it looks really good on this one on this um on this one but Whenever we get further and further down, it just gets darker and darker and things I can't really see. Your lighting's not really accentuating your model. It's kind of confusing things here and there. So what I would practice on is a overhead light, basically where the forehead is, take a 45 degree and put a light and have it come down that way. And then have a rim light from the back and a rim light from the front and then a small fill light to just make sure it's not too dark. Uh, because you're losing your your work would be way more impressive with better lighting. Okay. Alrighty, I think that's the end of those for right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get into the sculpting. Um, so this is really where uh, this is what we would be doing if you're gonna be taking the course. If you're coming, uh, basically what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be uh, creating a collectible from start to finish. Uh, I'm giving you modules every week. So it's not just a live class where I'm just doing stuff. The live classes are focused on your work. And so you'll submit your work as a ZTL only. I don't want any ZPRs, no ZPR, ZTL only that you'll send me. And then we'll spend 20, 30 minutes or however long it takes uh, to focus on an area that you're having a problem and kind of just reveal that to you. And then, you know, you'll sculpt it on your own. Okay, so this is what uh, basically what the live session will be like. Okay, so um, this is from Gord six six six. You do have things sculpted in. You do have some knowledge of uh, the muscles and everything, but um, you need a little bit more, a um, little bit more understanding about it. Okay, so. I know this is a werewolf, but I'm just going to go straight human anatomy, right? Um, I'm, I'm not a aficionado on uh, werewolf anatomy, okay? So um, let's take a look. Just overall, like, I would definitely use this and see, you know, like, the, the shape of your leg. You can see how straight it is, right? See how straight this is. On your tibia, you're going to have a curve on the inside here, right? So your tibia is going to come from here and it's gonna go straight to your ankle. And then your gastronemus needs to be dug in. And your gastronemus is coming from the right place behind your knee, but it just needs to be finessed. So you do know these things, but you need to um, yeah, understand them at a deeper level. Because um, you're, you're marking in all of your, uh, all these muscles here, but the shape of it, you're not really understanding. You're understanding their placement, maybe where they begin and where they end, but you need to understand their form, okay? So this is a vastus lateralis out here, and this is gonna take up about that much space. And the, the big thing that I have with this uh, leg is that everything's flat all the way up to the oblique. So you, what you need to have is you need to have a fascia here going in, so that way your leg, uh, your vastus, uh, or your rectus femoris here should be coming from your, um, um, anterior inferior iliac spine right here, right? So um, should have it here. It should be going basically right under the um, anterior superior iliac spine right there. You have a tensor fascia latte in here, but it needs to just need some more finesse. It needs more shape to it. Hold on one second. All right, so your vastus medialis right here is a little angular and it should be a little bit more round. The, uh, the edge of it is going to reach the very top of your patella or your kneecap, right? So your kneecap is kind of bulgy and what you need to do is kind of start off with a shield, right? So right here, because your knee isn't 
all of this, right? These are tendons on each side and your knee is just gonna be this piece right here. Okay, so we're gonna have the little shield here that we're gonna start off with, block that out. Okay, and then you're going to have your, um, your um, patella ligament right here that's going to attach to the head of your tibia. And then you're going to have the um, uh, femur or was it patella tendon here attaching to your rectus femoris right here. Oops, is it progressing? Around there. Okay. Uh, is everything all right in the chat, Mike? Yeah. Um, you had one question about your being adamant about ZTLs. Mm hmm. And do you prefer seeing anatomy sculpted in or blocked in with primitives? Uh, the method in which you accomplish anatomy does not matter. What matters is that you accomplished it. So if you want to bring in forms and you want to bring in simple forms and you want to do it that way, then do it that way. If you want to come in here and you want to sculpt everything from a sphere, do it that way. Like it, it doesn't really, really matter. You just need to understand what it is that you are creating. And so if you can do that, I, I don't, I see no problem starting off with primitives. All right. So um, here we're going to bring this angle down a little bit, this gastronemus. Um, and so now what we have is we have this apex right here for the rectus femoris. And I'm going through this really, really quickly. Like, um, I spend many, many weeks on, on my work. So this is just really, really sketchy. It's not gonna be anything final or anything absolutely amazing. I'm just gonna push and pull things here and there. Okay, uh, your uh, pelvic floor needs to be a little bit more deliberate. Um, so you should have a fascia on each side of this. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to sculpt every single muscle in here or else we'll I mean, with all the critiques that we got, we'll be here literally all day. Literally. Okay, your uh, adductors are acting kind of weird. They should be like a pizza slice that fit right next to your sartorius. Okay. So you have your sartorius going here and around and attaching to your the head of your tibia. So it shouldn't go in front of the patella ligament. Okay, so something like that. Uh, and then we're gonna go over your, um, your iliac spine. So that's your hip bone right here. And your hip bone is uh, kind of acting weird. And the reason is, is that your oblique is um, not constructed properly. So you're, everything's flat here whenever you should have uh, peaks and valleys. Okay, so your oblique is coming from your ninth, 10th, 11th and 12th rib here. And it's going to go over your iliac spine in the middle, and then it's going to come back up. And you're going to have that going back that way. And you can see, if you know this stuff, like um, the way it was said best, uh, Scott Eaton said best, anatomy is a puzzle. And the more you do the puzzle, the quicker you get through the puzzle, and the better you understand that puzzle, and the quicker you can get to what's really fun about all this. So, you know, like... Um, then that means just a formula. It's the same math problem over and over and over again. So if you practice it over and over again, then you'll get through that problem a whole lot quicker and you'll be able to actually express yourself instead of being frustrated with yourself in terms of like, I'm guessing this is here. I'm guessing that's here. Uh, let, me, let me go find some reference art. Okay, that shadow's there. That shadow's there. But on this person, it's over here. And over there, it's on this person. So my course demystifies all that. Instead of sculpting shadows you're going to be sculpting anatomy so if you're interested in that and especially if you're a character artist you definitely should because it's kind of like being a musician and not knowing uh music theory so, oh i just i just put my fingers on there and that's it you know that's not going to work in a professional area All right so here you have too many abs okay uh there are this is your false ab that i'm sculpting in here All right this isn't really an ab you have a two pack and then a K, but you can see how vertical this is. So you actually need to put a little bit more here and you're not gonna have a split generally uh, with this K down here. 
Okay. Um, and then you pr probably want to have a little bit more asymmetry in this so it doesn't look so digital. All right. Um, you have your abs here. And then you have this uh, aponeurosis that is going to split your uh, obliques from, or uh, yeah, your obliques from your um, abdominus rectus here. Okay. Um, here you'll, after taking my course, you'll understand where these are actually placed and uh, their size and where they go afterwards and where they attach. Okay. So um, I would definitely do that. Um, fix the clavicle. Yeah, do, 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 do. Probably fix that a bit. And so a little bit more of the three heads. You have your uh, clavicular, your sternal, and your thoracic here. Just a little bit more. Um, this is going over the bicep, which is good. Um, your, you need your chromium process here which is gonna be a connection point for your traps, for your shoulder, for your, um, your uh, scapula, all this stuff. So your scapula needs to go down at about 30 degree angle and then just go straight down, right? And you're gonna have a little tendon right there. And this does not connect up there. It connects underneath your armpit here. And this is called your terrace major. It should be going all the way over here. Right. I'm not going to re-sculpt this so it goes there, but that's where it needs to be because all this stuff is going um, to your tricep when it should be going up into your um, your shoulder joint. Okay, uh, But that's what I would quickly, uh, because we do have a lot to go through, uh, quickly just some pointers on that. So... You got a quick question from Doug. He said, uh, what resources do you recommend to learn anatomy? Of observation, my course, uh, Ryan Kingsland has a good like foundational in terms of just shapes. Uh, you have the anatomy for sculptors book. You have um, any medical illustration will help you as well in terms of understanding its origination and insertion. Um, and then Scott Eden, as well. Mm -hmm. So let's pull all this back and let's see what you brought in. Okay. So you can see a little bit more natural. Obviously, I would spend probably about another 20, 30 minutes on that. But you can see your abs, how it's coming out, and you don't have a pelvic floor. This one's now has a little bit more dimension to it, and the obliques are coming from the correct space. Your clap, uh, fix your clavicle, it's going down, it should be going across. Um, and if I had more time, I would have spent uh, a whole lot more time on the arm and all that. But hopefully that, that helps. Hopefully that helps. Okay. So let's see. Who is this? Dun, dun, dun. Felicia. Okay. So this is already giving me seizures of those eyes. I'm already having a seizure. Uh, okay. So uh, let's take a look. Um, I like to turn all paint off so you can really see what's going on. Mm, I can't really say much about a four eyed individual, so I'm just going to talk about the top eyes uh, and, uh, and the structure of your face. Okay. So uh, on here, what you're missing is you're missing your master, which is going to be. Uh, what you maciate food with. Right, you're missing that. Uh, I'm assuming this is a female, um, but you need to have a little bit smaller of a chin, a little bit more, and this needs to be a little bit more solid. Um, you need a nasal labial fold in here because you can see everything's pretty much flat here. So you need a little bit of space going there. Smooth this out. Do you have a lower res? No. Okay. Um, yeah, this is this is highly unusual for a critique <laughs> with like four eyes. I've never had this one, so thank you for this. All right uh, there, you need uh, to dig around these nostrils a bit more. Is it also messing with your eyes? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then you have this uh, whoop, 
right there. So we need to tame that down. This uh this little indention is coming from each side of your um of your septum. So your septum needs to be a little bit thinner and then have this come out right there. You're missing your three pads. You have one pad, but you need three on the top. Right? And then you need two on the bottom. Okay. Um let's see. Back. It's just really lumpy. Now you got a comment from Felicia. She said it was a class project did last semester. So just very curious how you handle multiple eyes from an anatomy perspective. That is a good question, Felicia. <laughs> it is a very good question. Uh, I would definitely, um, I mean, for me, I would just go some really good eyes and then stamp them right above with like a, was it the, what's that brush called? The vector brush? Is that what it's called? What's it called? Yeah, there's also the history brush thing now that uh, you can go back in the timeline. Yeah. I don't remember what it's called. Yeah. But I mean, if you want to do four eyes and stuff like that, uh, that's fine, but it's just a little hard to, like, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know how to do this. This is weird, but we can still talk about some standard anatomy things. Okay. Let's see. There we go. All right. So your teeth are really flat. Um, my internet connection is unstable. You're unstable. Is everybody there? Yeah, you cut out for like a half a second. Oh, okay, cool. All right, your teeth are very flat. They need to be uh, a little bit more round. Um, your chin, like this is, this face is throwing me off, Felicia. All right, uh, nose could be a little bit more like that. Uh, your septum could be leading the head. Your nostrils most likely need to go back a little bit further. Um, let's see there. And then your alar cartilage, you need to have sculpted in a bit more. Here, bring that out. Nasal labial fold. Again, this is a weird face, so things are going to be broken. You didn't sculpt a regular face, Felicia? You haven't sculpted a regular face yet? Are you going to give me? Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is just going to take a lot. I mean, I really can't help this. I'm just kind of figuring it out as I go. I've never had to do a four-eyed individual. Um, this right here, bring it over a little bit more, just so there's not this big old C in here. Um, and your lips definitely, um, maybe coming out a bit too much. And, um, let's go right there out, bring that in, all that good stuff. Yeah, I don't know about this forehead or four eye thing. I don't, I don't know what, what to do with it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I would, just... I would say like uh, not having the eyes stacked right on top of each other. It kind of messes with your eyes when you look at it. Mm. Makes you go cross-eyed. Yeah. It's just. Uh... I mean, we, we do have a little bit more structure here. It's it's a little bit better. Um, let's see what, what we have and what we got. So let's go here, shift S. Right there, go all the way back. Mm 
Can we have a little bit more structure? Just a little bit more. Um, you can't really tell because of the paint, but yeah. If you can give me two eyed individual, that'd be great. Um, let me see. Which one is this one? Not that one. One, two. Okay, let's take a look at this. All right, this is uh, Kasumi. All right. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Let me see if I can T-pose this. Is this does this have any low res to it? Let me see. Okay. So let's take a look. Um here, I mean I know it's a specific style, anime style. Right there. Just a little hint of this just slightly so in the shadow you have this little hit right here and just a little bit just so boom very very subtle nothing too aggressive nothing too aggressive just kind of guiding the shape just a little bit more there and this is decimated so we're going to have some artifacting if anybody's wondering what that is um let's see here. See if we can get that a little bit flatter. Right there. That's there. Uh, and always, I don't know, for me, I always really enjoy seeing that Rectus Femoris create a shape here and then dive down. <clears throat> Uh, da, da, da. legs are looking good. Uh, back is a little weird, uh, especially these shapes here. I'm assuming this is your, the end of your uh, scapula here. Uh, but it's looking a little weird. I think it's because your lat is coming from your shoulder as opposed to your armpit. So it's giving you a, a weird, um, weird result. All right, so... Even though that we're doing, um, uh, what should we call it, anime and stuff like that, we can still bring in a little bit of this foundational knowledge, just so we have some more room to bring all this in. So your lat and your terrace major are both going to go into your armpit. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. This can get a little bit deeper, a little bit more of the pectoralis, and then get some softness in there. Right, just a little bit more. Something like that. Okay. Um, and then just kind of hinting at your brachial radialis here. Kind of hinting that the triceps just going towards the uh, olecranon, um, I think would help. I'm not going to really touch the face because it's a specific style. But your detail work and all this is fine. Uh, a lot of the stuff is really soft. Like all these edges are really soft. Even your spikes are soft. Um, and so I would kind of decide where things are going to be sharp edge. Like around here, the breastplate, I would have sharp. Uh, and planar um, because you just have a lot, a lot, a lot of softness. But your your gesture is really good. You're not missing your elbows, um, which is good. Um, yeah, this is a pretty good piece. Pretty good piece. Just need a little bit more refinement. Like like here, you got it. Here on this on these shoulder plates, you got it. But on these wrist straps, I think they would have the same type of effect. This looks kind of off to me. But yeah, this is good. Got a lot of work into this. Mm -hmm. But just that slight bit. And now we got a little bit more dimensionality to it, but it didn't change the overall shape and it didn't change the style either. So that's what I would do with that one. 
Uh, let's send it back to the settings. Oh. What happened? Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Is there any, uh, questions in the chat? Um, not yet. All righty, people. Um, let me see if I can get through any other ones. Um, I'm going to stop share for a second, uh, just because there's emails in here that I don't want to be, uh, giving out. Uh, let's see which one we at least got Amelia transfer. I think we're on Ruben. Was it on Ruben? Hello, Cortez. Let's see. Anakit. There we go. Anakit, I appreciate you registering. Thank you very much. Copy. There we go. Let's see. Let me show my screen again. There we go. Everybody can see that? Yep, it's up. All right, so model portfolio. Okay. Uh, 3D portfolio. Okay, so this is it. All right. Uh, yeah, you need more work. Um, I'm not sure what this is. I would definitely take this one down. Yeah, I would either separate this or take it down because this isn't representative of what's actually in there. Right, you got you got landscape, but you got corgis and all this other stuff in there. I think it was in this post, so I'm not sure what the other post is. Oh, oh okay, it's an all in one. Okay. Yeah, you need better lighting. This is really, really flat, so you need rim and fill. Uh, this is nice and stylized. I like it. A uh, few more variances in the trees in terms of their shape and stuff would definitely help. Um, and some type of uh, background to kind of have this mountain pop off of would be nice. Uh, this is good. This is good. It's just that over here is kind of, I don't know what this is for. You have daylight coming here and highlighting this, and then you have a fire here. So I'm not sure. Just the lighting doesn't make sense on this one. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Hey, I'm sending you a couple in the chat that I'm pulling out of the stuff if you want to pull them up. Okay. Uh, this is good. It's realistic. Um, but I'm kind of confused on what you want to do, Anakit. So you have characters, you have environments, you have visual effects, and you have texturing. So uh, if you're going to be a generalist, that's fine, but you have Anakit Raj photography on here. So it's kind of, it's really, really confusing. Like if I, if I need to come here and find a texture artist, I would see Anakit Raj photography and I'd be like, okay, well, I'm not going to do that. I don't need a photographer. I need someone to texture shit. So I would have an art station that you direct everyone to. And then have this as your photography that you direct everyone to. Um, but yeah, that's what it is. Take a look at your visual effects. Okay, so that's that. that yeah, looks good. Uh, you just need lighting, right? You need to uh, frame your characters. Um, I hate to use my work as a example. Um, so let's talk about talk about this, right? So we can see the lights coming down, right? So it's giving us nice, nice shadows. And then I have two rim lights, one coming from this side and one coming from this side. So that the form you can see out here on the outline is always highlighted and it's never confused with the background, right? On both sides. Right? So that's what I would start doing for yours. You see this rim light here. It just, it just pops it off of the page. So you definitely want to start doing that. Okay. Uh, where'd you put these in the chat? In the Facebook or? No, in private uh, on the Zoom group chat. 
Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Michael, Michael. Oh, yeah, this is Leo. Uh, Leo, Leo, Leo. Um, yeah, Leo's been working with me. He's getting better and better and better. So any critiques that we had, I've already given you. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at this one. This one's this latest one. Really good. All that stuff is really good. No complaints. No complaints. Um, me too. Just uh, sent one. If there is still time, thanks for the great webinar. By the way, my pleasure, Walter. I appreciate you being here. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, Nishi's uh, again, stylized, which is good. Uh, I think you have a lot of basic stuff. So I'm just gonna go the first uh, these two rows here. Uh, eyes are too flat and. Um, uh, this lip, I'm, I'm not sure. The nose is really in the script. And uh, the hair is not matching the texture of everything else, right? Because you have very smooth bangs, and then you have, it looks like uh, tree trunks here. Um, this is pretty good. It's just it needs to come down for the chin a little bit more. It's a little bit too horizontal. And your nose needs to be separate from your face because everything's going up and over the face. So that's kind of difficult. Um, uh let's see this one really 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 cute like a lot of y'all are really good at this stuff where it's very simple stuff and you can put things in there and there's really no rules but whenever you get to rules it's kind of like y'all are guessing um and so you don't if you don't want to guess anymore then take the course because i guarantee you you will have no guessing at all about what's happening with the face or the body uh the ear is a little weird i'd like to see a little bit more of a classic structure to this because it's kind of throwing me off. Um, this one is nice and peaceful and relaxing. Um, but again, just needs a little bit more form. And I know this is stylized and cartoony, but you can still, in 3D, suggest forms. Um, this one, really, really good feeling. Uh, but your noses are all the same, and your face does all the same thing. Uh, I like these earrings and how you're doing that and I love my work that's really good and the uh the gesture here is really good mm -hmm. good job uh let's see did we already go Ruben okay Ruben 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 let's take a look you are a 3D artist uh what type of 3D artist are you a character artist are you a um what are you Okay, so this one I would take down. I would take this one down. Uh, no one's doing voxel art anymore, so I would take it down. Um, this one needs better lighting. You have one rim light uh, and then one fill light. Again, you need a uh, uh, main light coming down at a 45 degree angle and then a rim light on each side coming down at 45 if you want it to look heroic um that's it oops my bad uh let's take a look at this battleship uh it's okay it's just lacking a lot of like um like everything straight Everything's straight and perfect, right? A little bit more, especially since this is so stylized, it's missing the stylization. So push us to the extreme, you know, have this a little bit more oblique, have this a little bit, you see how everything's kind of level right here, have this side or that side be way more higher than the other, right? Um, and this is very, very straight. Again, add some type of curve in here so that you're supporting the stylization. Um, beep, 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 beep. That's pretty good. You're just missing lighting information. Uh, that's fine. Let's take a look at this, Daisy. Uh, you need deeper recesses for your eyes. Everything's flat. Um, and again, lighting. Mm, I love this. I love this. Right. Yeah, all these are good. But again, you know, there's no rules to this, really. I mean, it's the same base and you're just putting stuff on it and painting it. 
to make it look like the character, which is totally different from sculpting the character. Uh, but if you're going to try to be a pop artist, it's definitely the way to go. Your material's too shiny, though. Way too shiny. You see all this reflection is overpowering your drawing. And even with this, I would kind of hint it. It looks like uh, you actually did freelance for Funko. Oh, you did? Oh, nice, nice, nice. <clears throat> but your material's uh, way too shiny. It needs to be, uh, if the roughness is at one, I would take it down to like 0.45, something like that. Uh, let's see. Yep, good. Mm -hmm. This is definitely a direction you should be going in. I don't know what this, oh, it's your passes. Okay. Uh, your passes, I would just put into one image. I wouldn't uh, just put it all in one image. Uh, but yeah, this is the proper lighting and everything like that. This is definitely the lighting that you need to start going with, or at least your knowledge of it <clears throat> is uh, much better in this one. Uh, anatomical, let's take a look. Yeah, it's all in darkness, so I can't really see what's going on. You need a better room light. Uh, let's see this. Your nose is off. Uh, your lips are off, uh, they're, <clears throat> you're missing your pads and they seem really flat. Uh, this part should be coming off of the face. Uh, your sternocleidomastoids are coming and then coming straight down. They should gently be coming to the head of the sternum. Uh, your clavicle is pretty good. You're kind of hinting <clears throat> at this fascia here. Um, but, uh, but your canthal tendons, you see how they're sloping downwards. I don't know if that's the intention of the character, but it makes him look um, slow. So I would fix that. Uh, I would have either horizontal or slightly oblique. Uh, the impression of this is good, but again, it's all in, um, <clears throat> in darkness, so I can't really see a lot. Um, yeah, your forehead needs a whole lot more structure. You're missing your frontal bone diving down to your temporal arch. See how flat it is? Needs a whole lot more structure. Uh, yeah, and same with here. You, you're missing a lot of, you, you're marking everything in and maybe in the right place, but you need to have a deeper understanding, especially of your ear. This ear is really, really bad. Uh, let's see what's next. Invictus. Invictus. I think I've seen you around before. Where am I going? Gallery. Let's see. I'm just gonna go for these top top ones. <clears throat> yep, looks good. Looks good. Again, these creatures are very um let's see who what am I am I talking about the sculpture or am I talking about the paint? Because I see two artists here. So well I'll just generally comment on it. Uh, these type of characters, at least for me, are way easier to accomplish because there's really not a lot of rules, right? Uh, there are some hints at anatomy, but there's really no rules. I mean, you got this huge mouth and all that stuff. So these things are a whole lot easier to accomplish, at least personally for me. Uh, in terms of its execution, it looks great. Looks great. Like all this stuff is obviously done by professionals. Yep. Uh, that face is not working for me at all. Uh, these serratus muscles are not working for me. They're matching the wrinkles. Oh, I think we see a belly button. Um, the feet are really banana-like. Um, the shoulder could be popping out a bit more. Um, and just the wrinkles need to be distinguished from the muscles, I think. And then you have a wrinkle over the leg, and that's not where the wrinkle's going to be. It's going to be in the joint areas is where the wrinkles will be originating from. Uh, sinister, most mister. Uh, yeah, looking good. Mm -hmm. Generally, looks good. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, Invictus is doing some good work. Make sure you follow him. Yeah, here's a closer up. Yeah, that face is not working for me at all. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, but yeah, uh, all the all this uh, creature stuff is obviously really, really good. So keep it up. Keep it up. But if you want to take your human anatomy to the next level, especially in your face, uh, because you do the same face over and over again, at least for your Batman, 
Uh, then you definitely want to take this one because I will level you the F up. Mm -hmm. Yep, good job. Uh, let's see. Get this. Michael, will this recording be available after the session is over? Yes. It will be. Brendan Cruz. Let's take a look at yours. Okay. Um, Okay, nice gesture on this one. Nice pose, nice weight, wrinkles are good, facial expression's good. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. I'm liking it. Um, not sure about this pose. There's nothing supporting, like, is she jumping over something or. This leg's just really far out there. Maybe it's just a test on a pushing the pose as much as possible, but this, the bottom of it looks really, really weird. The bottom of the foot um, is because it's curving at the hip, at the heel. And um, you just need to balance these angles a bit more. Again, if I had the ZTL, it would be a whole lot easier. Uh, this is good. You just need to hint a little bit more at separating the shoulder. Um, um, face is really good. Uh, your nasal labial fold could be a little bit more um, defined because you can see how your cheek is just going up into your nose. That's pretty much everybody's issue here is that everything's going up into the nose. The nose needs to be separate from everything else, right? So you, there's a nose and then there's a cheek. Rarely do you see a cheek go up into the nose unless it's an outlier on each side. So if we're having someone idealize, which this character is, this section right here, you need the bridge of the nose, right? You need this lateral cartilage and then the uh, malar and the nasal labial fold. Uh, but in terms of posing and all that, your brachial radialis is right here is a little weird. At least it's shadow. Maybe it's just a small little thing. Your triceps going in the wrong direction. Uh, but yeah, really, really good. Uh, Walter, 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 Walter. Let's check out your ZTO. Um, okay. Let us see. To answer the question earlier about why we do ZTOs, this is why. Because it's fast. Yep. Yeah, yeah, ZTLs, the, I mean, saving a ZPR, I've, I've never understood that. Never understood the ZPR. All does, all, the only thing it's going to do is crash on you. That's it. All right, so awesome. This is exactly what I'm looking for, right? Anatomy, anatomy, anatomy. So it's stylized, obviously. Um, the head may be a little bit too long. Uh, you see how it's coming out like that? This needs to um, this needs to come in. It should be the back third, and your ear should be bisecting your head. So you need to bring that forward. Okay, your uh, um, your zygomatic is going up over the ear, and it should be going straight across. Straight across, straight to the to the ear canal. Okay. Next thing is that your forehead's flat. So what we need is we need um, a little bit more of a frontal bone, and then we need this diving down to the um, temporal arch. Okay. Um, this could come back a bit, maybe a little bit too tall as well. Uh, next thing you can uh, accentuate right here around the um, what you call it? Uh, around the temple, this section right here, and that way we have a nice little swoop. Um, here, your nasal labial fold is coming from here. It needs to come from the corner of your eye or the canthal tendon. It needs to come from there. 
can come down. Okay. Uh, your modialis could be accentuated a little bit more. That's fine. Um, this is a female and the chin's really wide. Let me bring this in a bit, smooth it out. Um, and you can see how it's kind of domey like this. We need to actually have that go in a bit. Um, the neck is a bit too wide for a female, right? And the traps are coming up way too high. So you need a neck and then you need traps. Okay, bring right there. Okay. Your, uh, your shoulder is straight down like that. It needs to come off of the acromion process, have the lateral head and then dive back into the arm. Then you have that, and then you have this, and then you have that right there, and it doesn't look so um, uh, so flat. Okay, uh, your okay, this right here, a little bit more subtle, thinner wrist. Uh, this brachial radialis can be toned down. Uh, I'm not going to go into hands. Uh, you have one, two, three. Um, I guess that's okay. But your obliques right here are pretty much just that right there. And again, they come from the ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th rib. So you're going to have a fascia in here. We're going to separate all that. And then your obliques are going to come around and they're going to attach. Uh, they're going to go over your iliac spine and then come back. Okay. Um, here you need a rib cage that needs to be going uh, behind, or I'm sorry, your lats need to be going over your rib cage, right? So this rib cage should wrap around and then your lats should come out. It shouldn't go into your uh, lats. It's a rib cage and then lats. Okay, your lats are going to come from your, uh, from your armpit and then come down and attach to your sacrum and the uh, posterior iliac spine. Uh, down in here, you need your um, spine of the scapula, which is just going to be like that, and then come back around. This form needs to go up into the armpit, uh, this uh, lat and this um, uh, teres major right here. Um, you need to have your seventh cervical vertebra you're a little bit more uh, defined, and you can see how it's hunchy, hunchbacky. Okay, so we need to flatten that out. Your scapula are going to be flat, especially for a uh, female of this size. It's going to be flat. Okay, uh, your let's see. Okay, and your clavicles are swooping down. Okay, they need to be pretty much straight across like that, okay? Uh, they're hardly ever going to swoop down that aggressively. A uh, little bit more form on the side so it doesn't look so um, so flat. Uh, your uh, flexors right here are all going to um, originate from your medial epicondyle and then go down. Okay, um, boom, boom, boom. Let's see. Um, your tricep is too long. It should be a little bit uh, shorter. Something like that. Get rid of that wobble. Um, your, let me get rid of these arms. Um, your abs, I think they're a little bit too, um, too bulgy. Okay. Um, I'm assuming you're trying to find the idealistic uh, female form, or maybe you're going for a CrossFit. I don't know. It wasn't mentioned, uh, but I'm just going to go for idealize. All right. So we need to make sure that we're getting that rib cage because right now it's just uh, doing this, going that way. It's going to come back around, right? So we have the uh, ninth or the tenth rib. And we need to have that rib cage right there. 
but we also need to have the lack go over that on the back end. Okay. Walter just said he was going for an athletic build. Athletic build. Okay. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So I just finished a Wonder Woman or she's almost done. And that was a nice uh, exercise. And for me, uh, in terms of uh, building an athletic female and still have her be um, feminine. Um, let me load that up real quick. And we'll take a look at her body. Okay. So this is what I'm about to finish. Okay. Uh, let's go to the body. And let's level this out. Okay. So a lot of this stuff uh, is not going to be seen because of the armor, right? But we're missing on yours, uh, we're missing this, uh, this rib cage, right? So if we go back to Wonder Woman, there's a costal arch here that goes into the oblique and the ribs are separate from the lats. Okay. Um, and you can still see, you know, she's quite strong. All the muscles are pretty defined, uh, but it still carries that femininity. And that's because the hips are wider than the rib cage. And the, um, and the face also signifies that as well with the uh, short length of jaw and it's oblique. Uh, finish and the chin that's small as well. So when, when you put it all together, then it definitely signifies strong, uh, strong athletic female, right? Because uh, those are the only things that you really need to keep in mind that the hips are going to be wider than the rib cage and that the, uh, the length of jaw is going to be shorter and there's going to be a deeper oblique angle and a smaller chin. And then if you put all that together, uh, it should come out as a uh, strong female because, you know, the shoulder may be smaller, but the structure is all the same um, in terms of uh, male and female. The, there's no extra rib. There's no any of that. Uh, we all have the same amount of ribs um, and all that stuff. So if you can sculpt a male, then whenever you pay attention to those uh, things I just mentioned, um, if you add those in, it should signify female quite uh, clearly. a little bit more and um, maybe you're doing this, maybe you're not, but I would definitely find a fitness model on Instagram and try to replicate that form. Um, so uh, you always have um, reference and, you know, they have thousands and thousands of photos of themselves on Instagram. So you'll never run out of uh, reference either. And it's always going to be the same person and all that good stuff. So uh, your sculpts will come out consistently. All right. So your vastus lateralis needs a little bit more form here. And this is going to uh, go down here and attach to the head of the um, fibula. Uh, your gastronemus um, are quite peaky at the beginning, and then they just slope down. Um, need to kind of let it uh, rest a bit more and uh, straighten out this Achilles. And your gastronemus are coming from behind your knee. So they need to wrap around forward uh, here. Do, 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 right there. Okay. Um, and then your... Um, Rectus femoris, maybe a little flat. Eh, it's okay. It's coming there. It's just that it's going in to the wrong place. So what you need here is you need your tensor fascia latte. Right there. And we'll go big around and then build that up, smooth it out. Right, so you need this tensor fascia latte. And then you have your sartorus. And then in between there, you're going to have your rectus femoris come out. And that's what's going to give that sexy, that muscle right there is going to give this nice sexy feel to the front of the leg. Okay. Um, let's see what else. 
and then your sternocleido needs to come from behind your ear and come forward right there we probably because you, you need to imagine the character taking a breath okay and you can see like there's not she doesn't really have a lot of an esophagus to work with um and sternocleido a little bit wider on the throat so it's not so uh, pointy um and then you want a nice uh definitive angle here uh the front of it the chin could be brought out a little bit more just a little bit uh your ear is too big or maybe it's not i don't know how you like your ears but for me it's way too big um and let's see what else let's go over this nose just real quick and then we'll move on because this is definitely the um best um best example i mean this is exactly what i'm looking for so i can show you what um what you can improve on because i've had plenty of times where i was like oh yeah yeah this is great and then i give it to someone and they're like yeah this needs to be fixed that needs to be fixed you know and i think it's super super valuable uh, to have someone do that to your work specifically. So in the course, you know, you do have modules that come around uh, that are every week. And then uh, we also have some bonus footage. And I can tell you how much because we can tell you, all right? But there is a lot, right? Um, showing you, you know, how I put all this together. But uh, you'll have weekly modules and you'll be working on a project and then we'll meet uh, once a week. And um, I will do this to your work right so you can see how to fix your sculpt because i think it's way more valuable to do that than to just show people how to sculpt because you know i'd be like oh we'll just sculpt a hand this way and then you're like well my hand doesn't end up that way so what's my problem and i'll be like well you're not in my course that's your problem All right but now that you're in it now i can sculpt over it and i can fix it for you and uh, and that way you learn, like, I would say of all the students I've had in this particular course, 75 to 85% of them have a gig and or a job after they leave. And that's coming from, you know, before, before my class and after my class this is a definitive line in which you can see quality coming through. So if you are stuck or you're like, man, I think I'm really good. I just can't find a job. Then take this course and I will take you to the next level guaranteed. We have a hundred percent approval rating on the live course. Uh, literally no one was disappointed with the way I teach a course and or help them. Um, and, you know, uh, at least for me, I always under promise and over deliver. So, you know, I, I find that's the best way to, um, to deal with students and clients. And just the, just the amount of bonus material you get from the course is another course in itself. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's over 70 videos in this course, over 70 videos and none of them are two minutes right none of them are like oh well you know just do this and in a video you know no they're pretty in depth especially the anatomy i go super super in depth with all that so you've got what four or five weeks of anatomy yeah like four or five weeks just of anatomy because uh in the courses that i have taken they never told me what was wrong with my work in a definitive sense they weren't like oh well you need to take your pectoralis and you need to move it over a little or uh you need to do this or you need to do that they've always been like well you know uh, i think you can do this a little bit better you know and i never found that valuable i found um you know critiques on very specific things that you know the person critiquing it knew how to uh, knew how to fix it knew how to illustrate how to fix it and um, and that that's where I learned the most. And so that's what I try to bring to the course as well, because we all are visual people, right? So the best way to learn is to see it done and then to do it yourself. 
We got a couple of questions coming in. Uh, Walter wants to know if he could get the updated ZTL to compare with his personally. Uh, which who are you? Which one? Walter's. Uh, Is it this it? one? I think it's the one you're working on now. Uh, yeah, maybe. maybe. Yeah, yeah, it is. Maybe I don't know. Well, what kind of money are we talking? <laughs> what kind of money are we talking, Walter? What do you got? You got some coffee money over there? Oh, that reminds me. Oh, and uh, let's see, Irvine's got a question. How do you approach sculpting a posed character? Do you start with T pose or sculpt them posed from the start? See, that is an excellent question. So, and then you go over that too. Oh, so. yeah, I go over that big time in the course. Okay, so the thing is that I always sculpt and pose. Always sculpt and pose. Because you can sculpt everything in T pose and you get everything right. And now you got to turn and you got to move the arm up. And now you've got to re sculpt everything again. Okay, so for me, after my course, you're going to know where every sculptural muscle begins and ends. You're going to know the general form that you can use it, that you can start sculpting it. And then after that, it's just your expertise and all that stuff, right? So, but I will give you everything you need to know how to create a properly sculpted character and how to make a collectible that is printed and is interesting to look at. So, um, yeah, I mean, like, it, this course is literally millions of dollars of information. Because if you can be a successful character artist, you can make about eight to nine thousand dollars a month, and you do that for 10, 10 plus years, that's million dollars. And I'm guaranteeing you, in this course, I give you a million dollars of information. So sign up. <laughs> okay. So uh, your calf needs a little bit more uh, structure to that. You're missing, <clears throat> you see how your <laughs> tibia is going into everything else, right? Uh, you need your uh, tibialis anterior to kind of come over, fix that form. Uh, you need, your tibialis needs to have a curve to it and it needs to end at your ankle, right? So this form goes all the way to your ankle. You can, you can feel the inside of your leg all, or the inside of your calf, your tibia, all that stuff you'll feel it if you just run your finger down that and that'll make a whole lot more uh, sense to you. Your sartorus, you have the bump here, but your sartorus it needs to come from here. Right there. How long are we going? Uh, how long are we gone? We can go as long as you want. Um, let's see, we've got where it's, we're an hour and a half now, so. Yeah. So, um, um, yeah, okay. one more question real quick, real quick yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Katrina asks how you approach drapery. Uh, depends on what it is. Usually with what I'd, I'd sculpt superheroes, like all the time. Um, if I need to do that, then I'll just go into Marvelous Designer and I'll make a cape and I'll have it go in there and then I'll refine it myself afterwards. Um, other than that, like if it's like some jeans or something, I'm just going to sculpt that. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna set up my camera. I'm gonna stand or whatever the position the character is in. And then I'm gonna get uh, turnarounds all around my leg to see how those uh, wrinkles are going. And then I'm just gonna sculpt it in with the orbs crack. And then you have a, there's like a master cloth brushes at the XMD toolbox. There's like what, 30 of them or something like that? Maybe even more? Oh yeah, there's, there's a lot of cloth ones. Yeah, yeah. And they have all types of wrinkles, soft ones, sharp ones, uh, alpha drags to where you can just drag a, a wrinkle into it. So, uh, and you get that with this course as well. Uh, is it on demand mm -hmm. and live? You get the full lifetime XMD, right? Yep. You, uh, you get free lifetime XMD, everyone that signs up. Yeah. So uh, definitely, definitely worth it. Okay. So uh, now this one, it seems like she's um, about to fall forward. So I'm just going to leave the hips a little bit more. And now it's a little bit more balanced. Okay. All righty. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else. Do we have any? Ryan. We'll go with that one. Ryan Sabertooth. Let's 
go to this one. And we'll go over one more ZTL. And we'll go over uh, a few more art stations as well. So this is your last chance. Make sure you put them in there. Uh, Doug's going to get one. Um, let's see. Edvard. And I don't, I don't trust any Wii transfer. Uh, so if you can check it out, it'll be a great webinar. Shout out from East Africa. Nice. Okay. Uh, so we'll go over that and we'll go over. That's it. So that's where we're going to end it. All right. So if you submitted a ZPR, that's your fault. That is your fault. Clearly said ZTL. All righty. So Douglas. Uh, again, missing a lot of anatomy knowledge. There's no uh, temporal arch. Your zygomatic is going into your temple. It should be going to your ear. Uh, you have no infraorbital furrow. Uh, you have no orbicularis oris. Your chin, you have no length of the jaw or uh, mandible. Your chin's too flat and long. Uh, hand is pretty good. Your fingers are pretty good. Uh, just way, way too thin there. Um, let's see uh, how it works. Yeah, I'm not going to comment on that because it's not my specialty. This axe looks really, really good. This axe looks really, really good. A little bit too much rest, but I get what you're going for. Way too much rest. Uh, but yeah, this is this is good. It's lit well, especially a little hot spot here in the reflection. Good job on that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow you back. I'm going to give you a like, Douglas. Uh, Again, these blue windows are really bothering me. Really, really bothering me. Fill it up with something or some light coming in. Uh, I mean, in terms of something uh, kind of surreal, this is this is working. Um, let's see. Okay. All right. Well, there's not a lot of character stuff in here for me to comment on, but um, but yeah. Keep it going. Edvard. Edvard. I like that. All right. You got an MP5 with a C490 Cronin scope. You have the uh, uh, retractable. Uh... <laughs> All right. And you got the uh, 10 millimeter, 20 rounds. Uh, you, got a, you got a silencer and you've got a flashlight and a breacher device. Um, do you have disabling FMJ or anything on this in terms of your perks? This is looking modern warfare like. If you play modern warfare, you put it down in the chat right now. Because we're looking for some EDKH members. Epstein did not kill himself. <laughs> he did not. And we are keeping that alive with the EDKH crew. Alrighty. Beretta, nice. I don't see a five millimeter laser on here, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Looking good. I mean, it's looking realistic uh, in terms of props. Yeah, it's looking really good. I mean, your hard surface work is really, really good. You know, I'm not an environment artist, so I'm not the end all say all of that, but I mean, it's impressive. Uh, it's pretty good. Pretty good. It would be nice to just have a simple head in there. It makes such a huge difference. And in my course, you'll be able to do that. Uh, a few more planes in this foot. It looks more like. Um, uh, looks very cartoony whenever you have so much realism. So you should have that. And I go over feet in the course as well. It just looks very clowny because it's so thin. Right. Uh, let's see. Bounty Hunter. Okay. Um, let's see. Do we have a close-up of the face? Nope. Okay. Uh, the face seems really flat to me, especially around the eye area. Let's see. Yeah, around the eye area. You, you have the things there, but they're not confident. Yeah, this forehead's very, very uniform. Uh, your zygomatic is above your ear hole. Um, your chin's really sharp right there. Uh, but your all that other work is really, really good. Uh, this one, your tibia is going in when it should be going out. 
your kneecap needs uh think of it as a shield as opposed to just a standard brush up and down and never send me red wax material ever again in your life everyone in the chat do not send me red wax material uh the cape i guess you're t-posing this so that you can rig it or possibly have it as a game character uh these two i would put another one right in the center just so we have three uh your forehead needs a whole lot more space uh because it's kind of getting cut off by this hair you need a frontal bone you need eyebrows um you need a little bit stronger of a length of jaw angle of jaw and mandible uh, your arm is very noodly uh, and it, it comes in, it pinches, and then it comes out again. And you can see that the angle is straight across from each other, which is giving a very cartoony chicken leg feel. So you need to have a 45 degree angle on this. So, you know, your brachial radialis should be coming from here and then going down, but yours is coming from the elbow. So it needs to come pretty much halfway down your arm. And it needs to come out here. And then you need your epicondyle as well here and again i understand that all this is cartoony and um, stylized but it is very important to hint at anatomy wherever you can so that you can support that 3d um, representation because even though it might be 2d we're still artists and we need to complete it as a 3d object okay all righty so we got that i think we got that one, and we got that one. Okay, so we're gonna go over this uh, Ryan's uh, piece real quick, and then uh, we'll take some more questions. Okay, so uh, Ryan uh, Frazier, I have been, um, I don't wanna say mentoring, because I'm not mentoring him, but whenever he submits stuff, I offer to critique it because uh, you know, he's got a family, he's got all, you know, all that stuff, you know, he's working a job that he does like, but he definitely wants to take the next step. And I'm always, I'm a sucker for, for dads, right? I'm a sucker for you. So, um, so yeah, so I try to help him whenever I can. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is turn off all color information because I don't give a shit about that. Okay, uh, this has definitely come a long way since the last time uh, that you submitted it. You just have really, really, thick quads that uh, have you see how the apex is here and the apex is here and it's pretty much straight across from each other and that's what you need to fix right we need to have a little bit more um, structure to this see how it's popping out here it should be popping out uh, back here a um, little bit more there and then taper it down as it goes there uh, your um, your hamstrings, your semitendinosus and biceps uh, femoris need to um, originate from your um, from your sitting bone and then come down and they need to wrap around your ankle. They don't just end here, they actually wrap around and attach to your fibia, which is going to be right there is the head of your fibia. And that's where this needs to come out and attach to. And then your vastus lateralis, um, I'm gonna just solo this out. Your vastus lateralis is doing this and it should be, um, I'm just gonna generally sculpt this. Um, and this doesn't, this is a separate tendon that's going to attach to the head of your tibia, not your fibula, right? So your um, semitendinosus is going to attach to your uh, the head of your fibia, fibula, uh, fibia, and fibula, whatever, fibia, fibula, little, little, all right? Uh, and then this is going to attach to the head of your tibia, all right? So that's gonna be there. This muscle that you're trying to uh, create is your uh, tensor fascia latte. And um, this is a ledge that you're actually looking for for your vastus lateralis right here. Okay, so you're looking for that ledge. And then your sartorus is going to come from your anterior superior iliac spine. And again, attach to your, uh, the head of your tibia. <clears throat> your uh, semitendinosus is gonna go around your leg and attach 
to uh, the head of your tibia as well. So we need to have that go over and around, right? So this needs to go over and around. <clears throat> your, um, your tibia is just a straight line up and down. It needs to um, have a bit more form. Remember this ankle is going to be your tibia. So it should connect all through there. And again, I'm just running through this real quick, people. Uh, so don't, you know, if you want to see what type of work I do, just go to my art station. So don't judge me on my quick critiques, please. All right. Um, and here we just need to see how it's just boom, boom. It's like an egg. Um, let me do that. Boom. Need to have the uh, sartorus, which comes from the anterior superior iliac spine needs to wrap, needs to lock all this down, right? Needs to lock all that down and come around. Right? And then we're going to have the vastus medialis come out this way. Right? And then we're going to have the uh, um, abductors here. Right there. And yeah, it's a very, 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 very sketchy people. So don't judge me on it too much. Right. Um, especially legs are very difficult to get done in a very short amount of time. All right. And then again, the knee is going to be a shield in which you're going to have fat and tendon on each side. Uh, you should have your um, anterior um, tibialis anterior coming around <clears throat> and then attaching on the inside of your foot here, which is going to give you a little bit more of an angle here. And it's going to also separate your uh, kneecap from uh, the rest of your leg. All right, boom, boom, boom. And then have that, something like that. We doing all right in the chat, Mike? Yep. Um, Ina asked uh, if we went through the first portfolios. We went over hers, right? I think so. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Ina, E-N-A. E-N-A. We went through pretty much all the portfolios on the art station and all that stuff. So it should be, I started off with that in the beginning of the... Uh... Yeah, there, there will be a replay. And if you miss anything, you can just watch the replay. Yeah. I'll be sending out the link to it as soon as it's available uh, to me. So, yeah, it should be uh, shortly after. So, um, all right. So, um, gastronemus needs to come out this way. You have your soleus coming out that way. Same thing on this side. Gastronemus, soleus, and uh, you need this kind of straightened out a bit. Be brought in. Need a little bit more form on your foot. It's kind of flat. Um, and it needs to be a little bit more angular. Um, just quickly doing this, you guys. So a little bit more angular. It's a little bit too soft. And your heel's way too wide. You see how your heel's wider than than the uh, ball of your foot? So it should be the opposite of that. Uh, let's see your calf. It's pretty flat. It needs to be kind of rounded around. And need to bring that down. It's just that everything feels like it's all bunched up. And you need to kind of let it breathe a bit more. Because I, I know he's like flexing and all that stuff, but we need to we need to leave space for everything in here, right? So. Again, very quick, very quick. Uh, your back is just, every, everything's way too thick. Everything's way too thick. You can see how flat the back is. And with a guy this muscular, we're going to have a deep, uh, we're going to have a whole lot of muscle on these clavicles and all this other stuff. Uh, here, your tricep needs to be moved over. There's really not a lot of space for everything to be in here. Um, so, I would definitely start doing that a bit more. 
And again, in the uh, in the course, I'm going to show you how to um, create characters um, in proportion with anatomy uh, repeat in a very, very consistent manner to where you're not spending time guessing how long things are or how short things need to be or where things need to be. I take all that out take it all out and just give you uh, formulas and foundations to bring all this together. Because um, a lot of the struggle and a lot of the reason people quit is because it takes them so long to get something mediocre if they can get that far. And so I developed this method to ensure that even people uh, that are maybe only a year in can still get something consistent uh, out of all this. And um, let's see, a little bit more. You just, you just have muscles and stuff coming out. You just need to form your rib cage a little bit more because uh, this chest is just way, way too thick and everything's really flat. You see flat, 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 right? Or really, really bulgy, right? So... If you want to, uh, I would I would look at Ronnie Coleman and use him as reference. And um, and I know you're going to sign up for the class, Ryan. So whenever you do, we'll definitely uh, hone all of your anatomy so that um, you're going to be taking out all this guesswork uh, where things attach and all that stuff. So I appreciate you signing up, Ryan. Okay, uh, let me fix this. All right, and was there anything else, Mike? Uh, I don't see any other questions. If anybody's got any more questions, you can throw them in real quick. Otherwise, uh, do you want to spout out a little bit uh, about your course that you haven't said already? <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> um, yeah, like, yeah. Okay, people, look. If you just started out, you, you know ZBrush, right? You know it's somewhat. You know, you can sculpt, you can mask, you can do all the basic stuff. But you, and you kind of get lost halfway. I mean, it doesn't matter where, but you get lost and you think you're finished, but you know it's not as good as other people because you can clearly see a difference in skill, right? If that's where you are, this is a course for you, okay? Because what they know, I'm going to teach you. And so if you're starting out in your year one, year two, you are literally going to be skipping four to five years by taking my course because you're going to know your anatomy. You're going to know how to use ZBrush. You're going to know how to use Substance Painter with ZBrush. You're going to know how to render. You're going to know how to pose. You're going to know how to Z model. 90% uh, of the time is in ZBrush. And um, uh, I think it's what, 10 weeks with a uh, one hour session, but that's always extended every week. Um, and that's usually I uh, like on Saturdays, sometimes Wednesdays, depending on the schedule. Um, yeah, I, th I think your one hour sessions sometimes go up to three hours. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Again, under promise over deliver under promise over deliver. Right. So uh, let's see what else, what else? And yeah, most of the people that have taken my course have gotten gigs uh, freelance or jobs. Uh, if they stuck with it. Some people went into animation or something else, uh, but the ones that stuck with character art uh, and took this course and took it seriously got gigs and or hired after they were done. So you will learn more in the first week of my course than you will probably learn in any other course when it comes to sculpting the face and understanding the face. Uh, I've heard that multiple times from students. So, uh, and I've been doing this professionally at a collegiate level for the last five years here in San Antonio. I teach uh, anatomy and sculpting to people who have never, most of them have never drawn, all of them have never digitally sculpted, and all of them have never used ZBrush. And I take them from zero to hero in five months. So like they weren't able to do anything and then they were able to sculpt a full character with assets, vegetation, and a scene in five months. And work that is quality enough to where my other artist friends are like, hey, man, don't train them too well because they're going to be taking our jobs. So 
I'm telling you, man, this, 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 this course is the number one course in all of the CG arena. All of it. Sign up for it. I guarantee you won't be disappointed, and you will level up by the end of the course. I'm going to be there for you. Mike's going to be here for you. The modules are going to be there for you. The students are going to be there for you. And, uh, and yeah, I don't know. I can't recommend this course enough. This is a course that I wish I had whenever I started because it would have totally skipped so many years of guessing and doing all that stuff. So I hope you all are ready to kick some ass. And also, uh, don't forget with uh, XMD Academy, you get lifetime access to this course. So you will be able to take it. You can take it over if you want. Once mm -hmm. it's over, you can jump back in, start over from the beginning, take it next time it's run again. Um, you get access to Spicer. I give you his home address and telephone number. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and y'all yeah, definitely need to take this course. Uh, you will learn a lot. I've learned a lot just mediating it and helping him out when I can. Um, I've gone through it. What it's the fourth time? I think. Yeah, so um, lots of really good work coming out of it. Um, everybody's been extremely happy with it. So, uh, yeah, just go check it out. And just for coming to the webinar, um, you can get $100 off of the course uh, with Webinar 100 as a coupon code. And I will also send that in the email for the follow-up for this with the replay. So definitely sign up. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, let's see. What do we have? What do we have? One more thing. One more thing. Uh, I want to thank Anakit, Bobby, Doug, Easy, Ina, Envy, Extreme Tech, Fabio, Felicia, Galaxy Note 10. Wow, they're here. Irvine, Josh Purple. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you always being here and your support. Katrina, uh, Napperstock, Okumu, Slava. I like that. Some guy. All right. Tim, Walter, Yakov, Sergio, and Squiggles. I really appreciate y'all being here for this entire course. I mean, this entire webinar. And I hope you uh, found something pretty valuable in it. And again, if you want to get in touch with me, uh, let me do some shameless self-promotion real quick. Uh, you can find me on uh, Instagram right here, Spicer CG, Art Station. Uh, you can find me under uh, Spicer McLeroy as well. And then on my Twitch, which is, where, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Uh, and then you can find me here under uh, Shotgun Scream as well. And there's my Twitch. So, um, yeah, whenever I stream, which isn't always every single day, just because I got lots of freelance and I'm also teaching and uh, just got a new puppy dog. So I'm not streaming consistently, but when I do, I bring the heat and you need to be there to watch it. Okay. Uh, anybody have any questions before we call it? Uh, and there is uh, one quick thing I'd like to add. Um, there's only a little over two weeks left to sign up for the course. So uh, jump on it um, quick, and I mean, spots will fill up. So jump on it before everything's completely full. Okay. And uh, Irvine said, do you like using Dynamesh or base model subdivide? I always use base model. Uh, I, in the course, I go deep into it, but I sculpted a male and a female mesh, and I rigged it, and, um, and that's the way I do it. But no one really cares how you get it done. Just the fact that it was done and it wasn't stolen. And then it doesn't matter what you use. Uh, Yakov, does the course let you come out with portfolio pieces or is it teaching you to help you to get making your own stuff? Uh, the course you do have, it's a 10-week course. You are to either have started on something or start on something and finish it by the 10 weeks. Um, and uh, I mean, in terms of a portfolio piece, that's just depending on your skill and your dedication level. Um, I can't make a portfolio piece for you. I can give you the information that you definitely need to level up and make a better piece than you've ever made before. But is it gonna be a portfolio piece that every single company is gonna want? I don't know, that's up to you, that's up to you. 
Um, hey, thanks for the shout out, Spicer. Sorry, my time zone is different. Just logged in. How do you? How do I watch replay of this? Uh, Mike is going to send you an email with a coupon, webinar one hundred for hundred dollars off, and a link to the uh, replay of this. So, um, and I really, really appreciate all the feedback. I see a lot of thank yous, a lot of that, uh, a lot of I learned a lot. If you did, whenever you get that uh, webinar in, share it out, share it out. And if you let me know that you shared it out, <laughs> Spicer's gonna take care of you on this course. You know, it might be a little extra, extra little discount for you. Extra little discount for you, okay? So share it out. Let me know that you shared it out. And me and Mike, who is the uh, CEO, CFO, and uh, what, what was the other one? Uh, God. Oh, yeah. That as well. We'll work something out for you, all right? We always like helping you, each other out. So share it. Let me know on Instagram, Facebook, uh, or ArtStation. Give me a little screen grab that you shared it. And don't just share it. All right, say a little something about it. Say, hey, look at this little webinar. It's pretty badass. Spicer was there. He looked at my mom. I definitely suggest anyone, you know, something like that, right? Put your fucking work into it. Okay. And, uh, but yeah, we will see you in the course. Hopefully, uh, I think in about, we have how long, how many weeks do we have until it starts? Uh, 16 days. 16 days. And it so, starts. So the last seven days, uh, I'm going to be streaming about two or three days on the XMD Twitch. So make sure you're following that on uh, XMD Twitch and YouTube as well and Facebook. I think we're going to be streaming out to all those. Yes, XMD Live on Twitch. Um, you can also go to XMDAcademy.com and there's a live page on there where you can always see it. So if I didn't get to your work or you want to resubmit something after you've uh, corrected the things that I pointed out, you are more than free to do that. And we will be announcing that uh, through the uh, XMD email. So make sure you're signed up and uh, all that stuff. Uh, Doug Bowen, hopefully we'll be able to jump into that class, if not this session, hopefully in the future. I hope so. I hope so. But uh, yeah, we're definitely going to call it there. Uh, Mike, I appreciate you uh, putting all this together, putting the course together. Everything that you see on the XMD Academy website, Mike takes care of, and it looks really, really good, and I appreciate you. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, uh, and I appreciate everyone uh, here. Uh, let's see, Doug Bowen, hopefully let's see, uh, doing the class with Eric Skew right now, so busy with that. Yeah, that's definitely going to be a good class for sure. Uh, but again, thank everyone that has come. Uh, make sure to follow us on our sites uh, because we're definitely going to be giving you lots of bad-ass stuff. Uh, with that said, have a wonderful, wonderful week. Thank you again. Share it out. Let me know that you shared it, and I'll definitely hook a brother up or a sister up. Yeah, thank you all for coming. I hope you really enjoyed this, and thank you, Spicer, very much for doing this. Mm -hmm. As always, an amazing time. Sorry if he broke anyone's uh, headphones. Yeah. Anakit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my pleasure. All right, people, y'all have a great week, and... Uh...